Today we're going to be talking about a congenital heart disease called patent ductus arteriosus. First, let's take a look at the fetal circulation. In utero, the fetus gets oxygenated blood from the mother. This is because the fetal lungs are deoxygenated and therefore can, for the most part, be bypassed. This is achieved via the foramen ovale and ductus arteriosus, which enable physiological shunting prior to birth. With our patent ductus arteriosus, oxygenated blood coming from the right side of the heart can be directed from the pulmonary trunk straight into the fetal systemic circulation. At birth, the supply of oxygenated blood from the mother ceases, the baby's lungs become oxygenated, and normally both foramen ovale and ductus arteriosus will close. This is to keep the pulmonary and systemic circulation separate after birth. Blue blood to the lungs and red blood to the system. So how does the ductus arteriosus close? It usually occurs within one to two days of birth, in response to increased oxygen saturations when the baby takes its first breath, as well as in response to reduced local prostaglandin and reduced pulmonary vascular resistance. Let's look at what happens when the ductus arteriosus remains open. Pressure is greater on the left-hand side. Some of this red blood from the aorta will be shunted across the ductus into the pulmonary trunk, where it takes an extra, unnecessary trip to the lungs. This increases our pulmonary blood flow, and cardiac output must increase to compensate for the blood, which is now being stolen from the aorta. This is clearly a left-to-right shunt and is thus an acyanotic defect. So patent ductus arteriosus is defined as a failure to close the ductus arteriosus within one month of the expected due date. We'll create a rough timeline to understand this. The premature baby is at risk of PDA, especially those born before 28 weeks, as they are prone to respiratory distress due to immature lungs and resulting hypoxia. Over 50% of prem babies will have a PDA. This may or may not close spontaneously as the baby reaches term. As we know, the ductus usually closes within one to two days of a term birth, but PDA can also occur in babies born at full term. This is due to a failure of smooth muscle to contract, and is sometimes associated with Down syndrome or Holt-Oram syndrome. PDA can also be caused by a maternal rubella infection, particularly in the first trimester of pregnancy. The presentation of patent ductus arteriosus is dependent on its size. A small PDA will be asymptomatic, whereas a moderate to large PDA means that more blood is passing through the lungs, so it can present with breathlessness, fatigue, faltering growth, recurrent chest infections, and diaphoresis on exertion. If the baby is premature, the increased blood flow is more likely to cause permanent damage to the lungs. Let's look at clinical findings and investigations. There is a continuous machine-like murmur at the upper left sternal edge. This is loudest in systole, yet heard throughout diastole as well. As aortic pressure is constantly higher than pulmonary pressure throughout the cardiac cycle, this results in a constant shunt from the aorta to the pulmonary trunk. We also find bounding pulses as a result of increased cardiac output to compensate for this blood being stolen, and hepatomegaly where there is congestive heart failure. Investigations include chest x-ray, which will be normal or show cardiomegaly and pulmonary edema in the situation of congestive heart failure. ECG will be normal or can show left ventricular hypertrophy due to increased systemic resistance, and right ventricular hypertrophy if the left to right shunt causes pulmonary hypertension. Long term, this can lead to shunt reversal and Eisenmenger's syndrome. Echocardiogram is diagnostic as it identifies the duct and is able to exclude other congenital heart diseases, especially duct dependent lesions. Finally, let's look at treatment. Unless the lesion is clinically silent and small, 
or coexists with another defect which is dependent on the PDA for survival, we can treat with the aim to reduce the risk of infective endocarditis and reduce the risk of pulmonary vascular disease, which can include Eisenmenger's syndrome. As we have seen, some premature PDAs close spontaneously, but to protect the lungs from unnecessary high blood flow, we can give endomethacin or ibuprofen. These are COX inhibitors which reduce the production of prostaglandin, leading to closure of the PDA, and surgery can be used if medical treatment fails. This is either PDA ligation or coil device closure at cardiac catheterization. Medical treatment is for infants, while surgery is preferred in those over one year of age. 